morning. Let's go do some spreading. Spreading, tilling. I don't think we're doing any spraying today. Just spreading and tilling. Why aren't we focusing? There we go. Oh, we're definitely going to need that. So we're going to pull this thing out and let it warm up while we fill up. So we're going to leave it run staged over here out of, the, out of the way so we don't hit it while we're backing up with the loader. I guess BJ is going to go move a couple tree limbs dad noticed last night while he was spreading after I get loaded up he's going to use the JCB and then he's going to get started uh, doing some tillage. So normally I would try to fill this thing just heaping full because with lime you apply a lot of product like tons to the acre, not pounds. This thing will hold in about 12 to 14. Yeah, no. You know, 10 tons pretty easy. But if we do that, it'll start bridging up and then you end up back there with a the shovel poking it down, not the greatest. So we're not loading it quite as full as we normally would. we go so we are tending out of this hoop barn all that we're spreading is in this driveway there's uh, 1100 acres on this farm and uh, we have probably 450 tons of lime left and it all goes here so uh, that's why we're tending out of the hoop barn if we were hauling it uh, or if we were going away from the hoop barn one of us would be hauling it in the dump truck and dumping it in the field it's just a lot quicker that way but uh uh, being that it's all in the driveway, I can handle it myself, and this frees up somebody else. Plus, we had this lime hauled in while the weather was bad, so it's been waiting on us. So, kind of convenient to be able to do that, and you're not having to wait on dump trucks and straight trucks and stuff. So, we are spreading. So, right here, we are variable rating. See, we didn't apply any there. We can go to this map here, anywhere there's blue. That's a coverage zone. We're putting down 3,000 pounds to the acre. I can look behind us. I can see it coming out of the spreader. So now we're out of that coverage zone. And like I said, I mean, you're putting on so much product. Variable rating lime is, in my opinion, one of the most cost-effective things variable rating does. We variable rate seed and we variable rate fertilizer, but a lot of the times we end up putting a lot more in other areas, so we really don't save any money. We just put it where it's more needed. In lime, you're actually saving money because, I mean, we would have probably came in here and put down two tons on this whole field or a ton and a half, and there's just a lot of areas where there's zero zone. So saving money and making us more efficient because we're not filling up near as often. Uh, let's say we've got nine tons back here, you know, put down two tons, put down four and a half acres at a time. It's a 50 acre field, it's a lot of fill ups. Here we can see our camera. We just shut off. We're out of the zone. Now we're back on. We're just about out of line, though. Like we're not going to make it to the end. We're about done. Look at this. This is some, this is some good treatment here. you may be wondering how do we know what variable rate to apply on these fields so if you remember back in the fall if you were uh, watching back in the fall we had a company called integrated active service I think that's their name yeah right there they came in and uh, soil tested all of our acres and based on those soil tests they determined the pH of the soil uh, if you are below seven which we have 
lighter soils, most of them are below seven. Uh, some worse than others, they can write you a prescription. You want to be as close to 6.5 to seven as possible. And uh, that's what we're doing. We're trying to move our pH in our soil. If our pH is wrong in our soil, uh, fertilizer, it won't matter how much fertilizer we put on, uh, we're not gonna be able to use it. It'll be tied to the ground and the crop won't be able to use it. So we gotta get that soil pH closer to seven. That's what we're doing. This is just crushed limestone. Uh, that's what we're applying. BJ is gonna come in and till this field once he gets going in the enforcer. So I really wanna get ahead of him nice to try to work that lime in a little bit uh, that way if we get wind I mean it's not blowing it away or if we get a huge rain it doesn't wash it away shouldn't really have to worry about washing we don't have any real highly erodible ground right here but uh, yeah, I would like to get that worked in this field is really rough from some uh, tillage practices in the past so we're trying to smooth it out with that enforcer. BJ has a chainsaw and he's taking a front-end loader Fingers crossed he comes back with all of his phalanges. Outer extremities. I mean, as long as he doesn't cut his right arm off, he can probably still drive a tractor. I'm left-handed, but if I lost my right arm, it'd make operating equipment a little difficult. It'd definitely be an adjustment. Then I think of people like Andy Detweiler, and uh, it could definitely be done. guys it's a great day to be in the 8400 not the 8400 sorry the 8400 is down the 9410 finally getting some weather and some good ground that we can get this sulfur tillage implement out um, it's an enforcer 5200 uh, we're going to turn over some corn stalks that uh, dad and Brian, Brian over there in the distance in the Alpo, uh, they've spread some lime on this field. It's going to get this turned over and incorporate that lime into the ground. I'll tell you what, this thing does a heck of a nice job. I think our plan is, I, I think Salford, when they brought this machine down, or this implement down, they said that uh, ideally they'd want us to do some vertical tillage after it settled a little bit. I kind of think our, uh, our strategy is going to be to put the Utterworth Crummer on the back of the 8400 once we get him straightened around and uh, just take that over the top of this and see, uh, see how that looks. Lime is starting to stick a little bit. I've been having to get out and shovel and yeah, that makes it a little slower process. Not putting near as much in now, hoping we can just keep on rolling without shoveling. That right there, that's the residue that's left there from corn harvest last year. That's a lot of fodder, a lot of stones, a lot of material, a lot of wind. With all that that's on the top, quite a bit of it is getting turned up. That along with the lime is going to go in the soil. It will decompose the live nutrients for the next crop. Drawbacks of a 19 foot in, like that. I have been here just over 15 minutes, and that is about five acres that I've run. So out of a 52 acre field, that means it will be here a while. <laughs> it's not too awful bad, but I mean, a thousand acres of corn stalks to go over or more. It's a lot, a lot of pulling. So we're both still making progress, just pretty slow, pretty slow. It's five o'clock now, or 4.30. BJ's not quite 100 acres in, and I'm probably just now crossing 100 acres. Looks like the enforcer's doing a good job turning that dirt, though. Smoothing it out pretty nice. That field was extremely rough riding. So I've been spreading out the lime every, every load. Like, uh, after I fill the spreader, I'll do this again kind of help break up some of the big chunks but more than anything I've been finding things in this lime that shouldn't be in there now this is crushed limestone like that's how they make this but that piece didn't get crushed that one erect a spinner and that's a solid 
solid rock. And then I found a piece of tin right there, a couple other things like that. Yeah, I'm less than impressed. It's also got a lot of this. It's real, real wet. Take a look and see if we got any big rocks. Don't see any. Good. Still give it a walk through. Just lots of clumps. Lots of clumps. Like that. We'll give you guys a bit of a pro tip though whenever you head to the field for the first time in the spring. Make sure you know the settings on your implement. From day one, start before dusk. That way you can see when you screw up. So yesterday, I ran about 25 acres. Started about this time of day, 5.30 or so. And uh, it got dark before I could really see what was going on. Uh, this thing is very adjustable as far as level. Uh, the, the, the rake on the back, you can adjust the angle of the fingers. But it's all hydraulic and I hit the wrong remote and got the daggone thing out of level. Luckily it wasn't too far off level. See how rough this uh, rough this field is by the camera bouncing. I'm, I'm also bouncing like that. That's one of the reasons we're running this Salford implement because it moves a lot of dirt. You can see back there it's, it's bringing up a lot of dirt. Hopefully it'll help smooth some of these fields out where we've uh, we run uh, a vertical tillage tool in, on it. it. Kind of starting to wash toward where things have worn and got a little bit out of whack. Chug a lug, chug a lug. Anybody else run one of these big tractors and have hot feet? So that is a piece of insulation that I cut out of one of Brian's factor meal boxes. Thanks, Factor Meal. Try to insulate my feet from the engine heat. Seems like once this dude hits about 180, 185, my feet start to roast. Anybody got, anybody got any tips or suggestions? I'm all ears. dark back there. Can't really see where the dark. That's what I was afraid of. You can see that it's hollowed out. Nothing's coming out of the back of the floater. And it's too dark to be able to see. Great. I gotta use that shovel right there to try to feed that down. I can't see back here. I don't know why you would make a floater without a backlight or work lights shine out further, but I can't see when this thing's not, not spinning or not putting out lines, so I'm gonna call it quits. Well, the mount and the lime is shrinking, but there's still quite a bit left. I'd say we still got a 175, 200 tons, something like that. We started with 500, so we did make a good dent. 